Okay, everyone. Uh, could you hear me? Yes, Lucy. Okay. Uh, let's begin. Uh, last time, uh, I had introduced the C plus plus, uh, and uh, I had introduced the input and the output uh, in C plus plus. Uh, input uh, and output in C plus plus is based on the stream. A uh, stream. Stream is a sequence of bytes that flow from something to something else. Uh, the process of output involves moving bytes one at a time from a program uh, output from a program to a device. Uh, uh, this device could be a monitor, printer, or a file, or, uh, or a file on a hardware, a, a hard disk. Input uh, is the uh, opposite. Uh, input uh, involves the uh, flow uh, bytes from a device to a to a program uh, device device could be a keyboard a network or a file uh, this is an example uh, output output example uh, we should include i o string this head file uh, must include this head file. Then we can use C out and this uh, uh, operator. Uh, C out. Uh, look. Uh, double left. Uh, double left arrow. Uh, this is an uh, operator used to output. Uh, this this is a uh, string uh, output uh, like a flow. Uh, like string flow from this side to this side. C out is a device. Uh, C out is a device. Uh, so string uh, flow this side uh, to this side. Uh, use double left uh, in the operator. C in uh, follow double right. Uh, double right arrow. Uh, Look, this is a device. This is a device like keyboard. Keyboard. Uh, the stream flows this side uh, to this side, from keyboard to a variable to a variable. Uh, and uh, uh, in C plus plus, uh, provide three uh, specific streams: standard input, standard output. And uh, standard error, a uh, standard error. Uh, standard input streams read data from the device. Uh, the standard output stream uh, white data to the device. Uh, standard error display the error message uh, to the screen. Uh, Uh, this is an example. Uh, this is the standard output. Uh, output. Printer. Uh, uh, printer. This uh, data on a screen. Uh, this is the standard input. Uh, get the the get the value uh, from the keyboard. From the keyboard. The first uh, value. Uh, then to the name. The second should be an uh, int variable. Uh, uh, int value as then to this uh, variable. Uh, this is the C error, standard error uh, used to output the uh, error message. Uh, remember, double left, uh, double left should uh, follow C out. Double right uh, should follow C in, uh, follow C in. Uh, double left, uh, 
is an insertion, uh, insertion operator, uh, double right is an extraction, uh, extraction uh, operator. Uh, we can use uh, insertion and uh, extraction. You use this operator to input output uh, the basic data type, uh, the basic data type uh, value, but cannot cannot uh, the output or input uh, user defined classes, uh, user defined classes. So if we wanna use this this operator support support user defined classes we should overloading we should overloading the operator look this is an example person is a class defined by the user defined by the user look it has a three member variables first name last name and job and uh, it has a uh, this this is a constructor uh, uh, this is a constructor and uh, since this operator uh, uh, this operator is not is not support is not support user defend classes uh, look this operator, this insertion operator, only support basic, basic data type provided by C++, not support user defined classes. So we need, we, we, we need overloading this operator. Uh, if we overloading uh, this operator, then this operator can support, can support output, uh, Person, uh, is class. Look, uh, friend, friend is a, uh, uh, this is a friend of the person, and uh, this is a return tag, is a string output a string uh, uh, operator. Uh, this is a reference a reference OS, and uh, this is a second parameter is a. R R is R is a user defined classes. Uh, how to operator? How to overloading? Uh, insertion operator. Uh, this is the syntax. Uh, this is the syntax. Uh, it has a, a two parameter. The first is OS. OS should be a O stream reference. Uh, o stream reference. The second is a user defined class. R. And we should not modify the R, so we use the const uh, to, uh, to describe uh, this R. Then we should uh, output uh, first name, space, and uh, last name. Uh, we copy we copy this string uh, to OS. OS is a uh, O string. Uh, old string object. Uh, then we copy the work at s add r job to os uh, to os. Uh, then return return os. Look first this line we call a constructor to instantiate. P, P is an object, is a person object. Uh, we call a, a constructor uh, to create this uh, object. Then say out P, since we had an uh, operate, uh, we had an uh, overloading insert, uh, insertion operate. So uh, we could use say out P and L. Uh, if we hadn't uh, overlap, overlap this operator uh, it will cause a compare error uh, it will cause a compare error because the, the operator insert operator uh, only support basic uh, data type uh, by default uh, default uh, this operator only support basic data type uh, here is a 
the user defined classes. So we need overloading this operator first, then they are insert operator could support user defined classes. Then output this then then derivation works as a mass feature. Okay. First name, base, uh, last name, work as a uh, job. First name, last name, and job. A uh, fail input and output. A uh, fail based input and output is similar to the uh, mechanism for keyboard and screen I.O. The main difference is that programmers must uh, implicitly open and uh, close fails. Uh, remember, we should uh, open and uh, close fails uh, if we want to. Access or modify the uh, fail, we should open it first. Then, after modify the fail, remember, close the fails. <coughs> okay. This is the procedural code to read, to read input from a fail. Uh, open input fail. Then read, read, precise it, close the put fail. Uh, this is an uh, example. Uh, this is an example. Uh, look, uh, we want to get the uh, uh, get the values from a fail. So we need to uh, uh, get this. Uh, Variable uh, f string f string input string uh, this means input fill string uh, uh, remember include this head fill first head fill first if you want to operate uh, fill uh, include this uh, head fill first uh, if is a if string uh, object then open uh, open uh, this fail. If you cannot open, say error, uh, say error, uh, error message, then read. <coughs> we read the content uh, from the fail, uh, from the fail, then output to the screen, uh, output, output the fail content to the screen. After that, after operator uh, the fail, Remember, close it, close it. This is a fail input. <coughs> fail output. Fail output means you should write content to the fail. Uh, write content to the fail. So it should be O N F is a O. F strings, uh, all F strings. First, uh, open the uh, file. Uh, cannot open file, then see error, uh, the error message. Uh, in this for loop mode, uh, white content, white content uh, to the file, and after that, close the file. File output means uh, white content to the file. Uh, file input means uh, read content from the file. Then, if you want to why? So you should uh, define O F string abstract. Uh, if you want to read from fail, you should define I F string. Uh, 
text substitution. A uh, full inclusion is a feature of C++ uh, preprocessor that allows a source code built to use shared code. Look, uh, if we want to shared code, we should uh, include uh, head fails, head fails. Macro substitution, uh, macro substitution, uh, the syntax uh, like this, uh, like this. The C++ preprocessor can perform a programmer defined text, text substitution throughout an entire source code file. This is known macro substitution. Programmers define a macro using the defend processor directive, uh, which can take uh, the following form. This is uh, uh, this is the syntax. Defend identify uh, the parallelism text. Or defend identify. Uh, it looks like a function. Uh, and this is uh, the parallelism text. Look, uh, in this example, we define maxim is a twenty. Is a twenty. Then we we'll compare this source code uh, here. The maxim should be parallel as 20. We use the 20 compiler, the use the 20 to be parallel maxim, maxim. And uh, look, this is uh, it, this is like a function. Yeah. Max, x, y, uh, it likes a function, max and uh, two parameters. But these two parameters, uh, no data type. Look, x, y. You needn't uh, define a data type for x and y. And uh, here, x bigger than y, then x and y. When compile, compile this source code, max ij uh, should be parallel uh, with this text, this text. i is a four, j is a three. So max ij, max four, three, we parallel with uh, four, three. Four, three. Uh, look, so this part should be parallel uh, with this, uh, and uh, should say out uh, four. Uh, the result is a uh, four. Is a four. Look, this function you needn't uh, you needn't define define uh, the parameters uh, data type just. Uh, we parallel with this uh, text. A good experience, a good experience, we should add an extra, extra bracket to enclose uh, this code, to enclose this code. <coughs> Look, without this bracket, without this bracket, it will not cause a runtime error or compare error. Look, I mean, remove this bracket. So this part should be replaced with uh, four is three. Four. Three. Look, when compare this source code is correct and uh, run this code is correct. The answer is uh, the, the output is a uh, four. Is a uh, four. So it seems that we needn't add this extra bracket, but this is a good experience. Use a uh, extra bracket to enclose your code, your code.
Why? Look, look this example. We had a defined and x y. Uh, this is a macro. This is a macro function. Uh, and uh, in macro function, we need to define a data type. Uh, add x y replace with uh, x plus y. Uh, x plus y. So we'll compare this code. Look, x equal to three multiply. Uh, add one two one. Add two, right? Because this part replaced with this, replaced with this. So the answer is uh, eleven. Is a eleven? Uh, look, is a eleven. So the result is not correct. Uh, this result is not correct. Uh, it's a good experience. We add an uh, extra. Bracket to enclose this code. Look, a good experience we add an extra bracket uh, to enclose uh, this macro code. So we'll compare this, we'll compare this, it should be x. This is correct, right? This answer is correct. Without this uh, bracket, the answer is 11. Not correct, not correct. So this is a runtime error. Uh, no, in this, uh, without bracket, it would not cause a compare error, but the result is uh, incorrect. So it, uh, it's a, Good experience add extra bracket to enclose your macro function code. And a conditional uh, com a compar compilation, uh, we can use defend uh, to support conditional compilation. Uh, using defend. <clears throat> and some other uh, preprocessor di directives, we can instruct or uh, compile to compare only certain sections of our source code. This is useful in many cases, one of which is for inserting debugging code that can be easily enabled and uh, disabled. Uh, below, we, we see an example that use the different if and if directives. Look, uh, this is an example. Uh, we we can use we can use this to support conditional conditional compare. Uh, we define a debug define debug and uh, here if Defend debug, then say error, uh, and if, uh, if, and if, and here, if, and if, uh, say error, say error. Why we do this? You know, if you have a, if your code is uh, quite long, if your soft code is uh, quite long, when you debug, when you debug your program, you always insert, uh, you always insert some medium, some say error or say output to, to see the medium result. You know, if your program is uh, so long, is uh, so long, uh, you, when you debug your program, you always insert some uh, say out or say error. Uh, say out or say error uh, sentence in your program to see the medium medium result. Uh, for example, uh, this program has a uh, three types, uh, has a uh, three steps, and uh, the final result is uh, not correct. 
then we should insert three say out or say error uh, in the sentence in each step. Uh, step one, we see the uh, median result. Okay, that's a correct. Then to see the step two, uh, median result is uh, correct or not. If step two is not correct, so this part must be wrong. Uh, there, there's some error in this part. If step two, medium result is uh, correct, step three is uh, not, not correct. So in this section, there must be, uh, the error must be in this section. So we always uh, insert uh, say error or say out sentence in the program to see the medium result, to see the medium result. So we can use this sentence, uh, this sentence. If defend debug, then stay out, stay out the medium result, uh, the medium result. When this program finished, when this program finished, you got the correct, you got the correct answer. So you should remove, uh, you should remove this say out or say error sentence uh, because you needn't show this uh, medium result. You should remove this uh, one by one. But if like this, if depend debug, then use if depend debug and if uh, we use this sentence to enclose to enclose uh, say error or say output sentence. When you finish the program, you only remove this sentence. Uh, you only remove this sentence. Then this say error sentence should be invalid, uh, should be invalid because not depend but this section will not be executed. Uh, okay, so this is a good experience. We use the defend debug, then each sentence used to output the medium result. We use a if defend debug and if to enclose this uh, say error or say out sentence. So this may, this is a conditional compilation. Uh, we can use this uh, to debug our uh, program. And in this, in this example, look, it's a good experience. Use uh, if no defend, head fail, defend, head fail, and if. Uh, if you create a head fail, look, this is a head fail, bank account dot h, bank account dot h. It's a good experience. You should use that uh, if no defend bank account dot h then defend bank account dot h and if uh, you should use this sentence to enclose your head fail your head fail uh, and this is uh, the cpp why why we use this to enclose our head fail <clears throat> Maybe in your main program, uh, in your main pro, uh, in your main function, uh, you need to include many head fails. Uh, if you want to run your main function, it include many head fails. Uh, for example, if uh, in your main function there is a bank dot h, uh, bank dot h. Uh, and uh, bank class, when you define a bank class, bank class use uh, bank account dot h, bank account dot h. So if you include head fails, bank dot h and uh, bank account dot h, I mean, 
you defend back this class you had used bank dot h so in your main function you need to include this head file and include and you include bank account dot h again so it will cause a compare error you see ah if you include this head file again it will cause a compare error compare error so if you use this if you use this to include enclose your head file then only one bank account dot h should be included uh, should be included it will not cause a compare error uh, this is why we always use if no defend defend and if uh, to enclose our head file uh, to avoid this case uh, uh, this, in this case maybe a head file being included for two times uh, include one times and when you include bank h in bank h include bank account again so it will cause a error a good experience should use this Okay, uh, next uh, section, uh, memory management. Uh, in this section, we should study the uh, pointers. I think you had studied the pointers in C programming uh, language and uh, how to pass in the uh, parameters, uh, how to pass in the uh, pass uh, parameters and uh, how to manage uh, uh, dynamic memory. This section is a uh, uh, look, a pointer is a variable that stores a memory address of a, a, another you know, variable. A point variable is a unique in that it stores a memory address of a, another variable. Yeah. Pointer is a variable that stores a memory address of another variable. So remember pointer is a stress, is a stress. Store other variables stress. A pointer variable is a unique, unique in that it stores the memory address of another variable. A memory address is a specific location in main memory where a variable exists during program execution. So, <coughs> memory address is a specific, specific location in main memory. Programmers use pointers to indirectly access and uh, manipul manipulate other variables. This access and uh, manipulation is considered indirect. Uh, since it is accomplished uh, using a pointer instead of uh, actual variable being modified. Interaction allows the uh, creation of a complex data structure and uh, powerful algorithms. Uh, without pointers and uh, interaction, it would not be possible to create a linked list data structure. Uh, so linked list. Remember? Maybe you had a study linked list in C program. Uh, this one part is to dollar date, and this is the point how it will be successful. Basic operations of pointing, declaration and uh, analyzation, the reference, pointer, arithmetic. 
the declaration of a point variable requires the use of some special syntax. A pointer declaration must prefix its variable name with a with an asterisk. Asterisk. This signifies the compiler that the variable declared the point. Look here. A N T P T R. The data type is the int asterisk. Int asterisk. This means a NTPTR is an int point. It's an int point. We can use this point point to an int variable's address. P point is the address. Int point. We can use this point point to an int address. Look, float PTR, a data type, float at a risk. That means float PTR is a float point, float point. Float PTR used to point to the address, uh, used to store address, uh, in, in a stress, store a float, float variable. Uh, and uh, char PTR. This is a char point. So this address, uh, there is a char variable store in this address. In this address. Uh, remember, pointer is a stress, is a stress. Uh, and the pointer is a data type, uh, int pointer, a float point, char point. That means in this address. Store the variables data type. <coughs> pointer analyzation uh, also requires some uh, new syntax. We cannot uh, simply initialize uh, a pointer to a non point uh, variable because pointers uh, store memory address and uh, not regular values. Pointer store memory address, not values. Instead, we must obtain the memory address of the variable. This is the address of operator. We can use this operator to get the variable's address. Look here, i int i equal to 100. Uh, then Address of I will return uh, will return this this variable's address this variable's address then we can assign this address to the int int point uh, ptr 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 is an int point and uh, I is an int int variable so we use uh, address of operator to get the address to as the analog address in PPR. Indirect access and uh, manipulation of, var of variables using pointers is uh, accomplished uh, using the uh, dereference operator. Uh, a programmer applies the uh, dereference operator as a risk to access or modify the value of the variable pointed uh, to by a pointer. But notice this operator, this operator. Here, i is an uh, int variable. The value is uh, 100. Then we get an address, i address, uh, then to the PTR. PTR is a point, uh, PTR is a point. We assign an address to the PTR. Notice at a, at a risk PTR. Notice this syntax. At a risk PTR. PTR is the address. At a risk PTR is the value. Is the value stored in PTR? You know. So we should notice this operator. As the risk of PPR is the value stored in PPR. So this step output is 100 because 100 stored in this 
address. As a risk, we, if we want to access PTR, PTR value, uh, I mean, the value stored in PTR, so we can use uh, risk, uh, risk PTR means the value stored in this, uh, in this address. Look, uh, and uh, we assign uh, 200 to asterisk PTR. So we had a change, we had a change, a value store in this address, in this address. Then say out I, I should be 200, uh, 200, because we, we had a store this value, uh, store this value in this address. And I address is a PTR. So when say out I, it's a 200. Okay, look, this is a user defend class, a user defend class C. Uh, in this class, uh, we know pointer, pointer to the use to point to the user defend class. Uh, previous example, we use the pointer, point to the basic, basic data type variables. Uh, and uh, in this example, uh, we had uh, create uh, this uh, class, class C, uh, class C, and we can use uh, pointer to use a different class. Uh, we sim. This is an uh, object. Uh, this is an uh, object, and uh, the class is a uh, sim. This is an uh, object. And uh, we see out, uh, we see out the same number. Uh, look, this is a constructor, a constructor. So it should be, uh, it should be zero here, uh, should be zero. And uh, we call this method, this method. Then here, PTR, PTR is a pointer, is a pointer. And uh, look, the data type is a thing. That means this PTR should uh, should store address to the store address, and uh, in the stress there is a object, there is an object, and ob abstract class is a thing. Uh, object class is a thing. So here, thing is an object. We get an address and uh, then uh, address to PTR. PTR is a Point, is a point. Then we see out uh, PTR number should be zero, and the PTR method one should see out method one. PTR method two should see out method two. Notice that when thing here, thing is a uh, is an object, so. When we want to call, it's a function should be sin dot sin dot ah method one ah method one. This is the look sin dot method one call a sin's member function ah sin is a object dot member function. Here, PTR is a point, is a point, point to sin, point to sin address, point to sin address. Then we want to call it a member variables. Uh, uh, when we want to access uh, it's a member variables or member functions to the follow this operator. PTR is a Point, point to the same address. So after, after a point, we need to use this, not dot, not dot. We need to use this operator uh, to call it a function one, uh, function two. Uh, you should remember this syntax. After, after a point, 
they should use this operator. Uh, if this is a thing, so we use the dot uh, call function on number of variables. Uh, okay, uh, take a break. Okay, I'm back. The reference, uh, we can only uh, safely the reference pointers that point to a valid memory address. The referencing pointers that have not been analyzed to valid memory address cause a runtime error. One technique used to avoid this problem is to is the analyzation of a point of variables to the non point. Uh, look, when you declare uh, a PTR, this is a point, this is a point. So we use the, we assign the non to PTR, uh, analyze. Analyze the PTR to a non point, a non point. Then here we assign an I address uh, to the PTR. This is a good experience. This is a good experience. We, when we initialize a, a point, uh, we should make it, uh, make it point to a non. Pointer. Arithmetic is the use of addition and subtraction to change the memory location that a pointer stores. These operations are all related to the memory location we currently store uh, in the point. Look, in this uh, example, there is an int array, uh, int array. Then we get the every zero, every zero address. Uh, and then this address to the PTR. We know this is an array. Array store in a continuous uh, memory space. Uh, yeah. Look. This is a continuous, continuous space uh, used to a uh, stall array, and the uh, array zero right here. Uh, the array zero address is the address for this array. Uh, array zero address is the first address for this array. So we we assign this address to a int point, uh, int point PTR. Uh, remember, asterisk PTR is the value, is the value stored in this address. So say out asterisk PTR should be ten, uh, should be ten. Here PTR add add uh, plus plus. We know PTR is a int, is a int. So each time we plus plus, it will move an uh, int. Distance, uh, an int distance. So, say all asterisk PTR should be twenty. Uh, should be twenty, and uh, PTR minus minus should uh, remove an uh, int distance. An uh, int distance. Uh, PTR is here. Then minus minus point to here. Uh, point to here. Then output is a ten. Is a ten. PTR at four, right here at four. One, two, three, four. So PTR point to here, point to here. So output fifty. Uh, output fifty. Since this PTR is a uh, int, so each time plus plus move, uh, move and 
int distance. Add four, so move four int distance. This is a basic point arithmetic. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a uh, int array. Uh, here we get the date. Date can address here. So that means, look, the, this is the int array. The index should be zero, one, two, three. So the last, the last array, the last the data elements index is a ten. So data ten address we made the pointer, point to the last, last data element, last data element. Then asterisk ptr say out it should be output like 10 do this well movement each time ptr minus minus uh, until uh, ptr point to the data the data zero so the output should be 10 9 8 7 6 zero. so this is a Every the every traversal uh, the first we made the point to the last one. Then do this well movement each time manners manners uh, and uh, output output the data elements from the end to the beginning. Parameter passing mechanism. Uh, there are three. There are three ways to pass in, to pass a parameter uh, to pass a parameter in C++. The first pass by value. Second pass by reference. The third is a pass by point. Pass by point. Pass by value is the default default parameter passing mechanism. In C++, that means in C++, uh, the default, the default uh, parameter passing mechanism is pass by value. Uh, when a parameter is passed by value to a function, it is a copy. Remember, it's a copy of the parameter is uh, created and uh, given to the function. So, pass by value pass a copy. Of the original value is a copy a cop is passed a copy of the original value to the function. That's important. Since if we make a change to a parameter that is passed by value, the original variable will remain unchanged. Will remain unchanged. Our change is made to a copy of the original variable. Look, uh, this example. This is a function. Uh, only has a one parameter int x, uh, int x, and uh, in this function x plus plus uh, x plus plus. The main function y equal to ten. Uh, y uh, we assign the ten to y. Then call a function int y. Increment y, increment y, uh, increment y. Then say out y should be 10. Why? Because increment y is this time pass by value, pass by value. The original value is a 10, is a 10. And uh, we should copy, uh, copy the original value to this function. In this function, x plus plus, we just change the original values, copy. We just change the copies, uh, copies value, not the original, uh, the original value. So after return, after return this function, uh, this function, uh, say out original value, 
no change and no change. This is a pass by value. I remember pass by value just uh, pass a copy of a original uh, value. <clears throat> And uh, pass by value can pass an object, can pass an object to the, the function. Here, we defend, we defend a class uh, name is a person. Uh, we defend a person class. Then here, increment age, increment age, the parameter is a. Uh, only one parameter. The parameters uh, uh, type is a person. Is a person. And uh, in this function, uh, we get the age at one. Uh, we made the, the piece age uh, at one to piece age. Uh, this is a pass by value. Uh, this parameter is a pass by value. Look here we person is a variable, is a person's, uh, is an object, uh, uh, and the class is a person. Then we set his name is John Doe, set age is a 30. Uh, uh, look, here is a constructor, constructor. Uh, and the set age, uh, set age, we made the age equal to age. We call uh, the constructor, we assign the age, uh, we assign the value to the age. Uh. Yeah, we call a constructor, uh, set the name John Doe, the age is uh, 30. Then call an uh, increment age person, uh, in this, because this is a pass by value in this function, in this function, p set age equal to 31, uh, equal to 31. But this p is a not original, is a not original object. It's a copy, it's a copy of the original object. So we thought it is a, its age equal to 32. When this function returned, this this the copy, this copy should be destroyed, should be destroyed. And uh, when you see out person get age, it's uh, still 30, it's uh, still 30. Because in this function, pass by value, we had a create P copy, and we change P, P's copy's age. When this function returned, P's copy destroyed and uh, original. His age not changed. So this is a pass an object by value. Pass by reference, unlike pass by value, copies are not made of uh, variables that are pass by reference. <clears throat> Instead, a called function receives receives a reference or allies to the actual parameter supplied by the calling function. For this reason, pass by reference is used to build functions that can modify original variables in the calling function. That means if you wonder Modify the original values. Original values, you should pass by reference. Uh, you should pass the parameter by reference. Look, this is the example. Uh, one common use of a pass by reference is to create functions that can modify the variables passed to them by, by a calling function. Here, increment. This is a pass by reference. Look, int x, there is 
address of clicker. Address operator that this is a reference. That means X is a int reference, is a reference. Here, X plus plus. Uh, well, this reference is a original, is a original values, uh, not, not a copy of the original. So run this uh, main function. Y equal to k, then increment y uh, plus y plus y reference to this function uh, to this function. Then see out y should be eleven should be eleven. Uh, we have to change the original values original values. So remember this way uh, plus by reference uh, plus by reference. This operator. Passing a parameter by reference is also used as a mechanism to pass large objects to functions. Uh, when objects are large, pass by value can result in time consuming, consuming copy operations. Pass by reference is more efficient because it does not involve copy. Uh, look, this is a class. This is a class 10. Uh, user defined class 10. This is a constructor. This is a copy. This is a copy constructor. Remember, copy constructor are uh, used to copy, are uh, used to copy the uh, object. So here, uh, constructor, uh, copy constructor, uh, and uh, this destructor, uh, destructor. Uh, this function one, uh, had cat, the cat. This is a pass by value. Look, function one is a, the, the cat is an object, uh, pass by value. Here, function two uh, is a pass by reference, uh, pass by reference. The cat is an object, pass by reference. In main function, cat Presky, uh, cat Presky. So Presky is a is a cat object. Presky uh, is a cat object. Then they out calling function one function one Presky uh, Presky. Stay out calling function two function two Presky. Uh, you know in function one in function one is a pass by value is pass by value. Pass by value, that means it should pass a copy of the press key. Copy the, it would pass the press, the press key's copy to function one. When you copy press key, copy this object, it should call a copy constructor, copy constructor, uh, uh, this function, uh, this function. And uh, when your function one return return uh, this copy, this cat copy should be destroyed, should be destroyed, and uh, you should call this function. Uh, you should call this function. Now, so when pass by value, when pass by value, we need to call this copy constructor. When pass by reference. So we needn't call this a copy constructor. Uh, this way is more efficient. Uh, this way is more efficient. Especially for a big object. For a big object, when copy, when call a copy constructor, uh, it's not uh, efficient. Uh, pass by reference is more, 
more efficient. Uh, look, we run this uh, copy constructor, uh, and uh, when calling the uh, function one, function one is a uh, function one is a uh, pass by value. So you need a uh, call a copy constructor, then return, uh, then return. Uh, function one return. Uh, this is a uh, copy constructor and uh, destructor, uh, destructor. Oh, look, look here. Uh, function one return type is a cat. Uh, function one return type is a cat. That means when you return an object, when you return an object, it will call a copy constructor. Uh, it will call a copy constructor again. Uh, so here, so here, before it return, we should uh, call a copy constructor and return return this copy, return this copy, and uh, call a destructor, a uh, destructor, when the uh, uh, function one finished, uh, so we should uh, destruct her, uh, this two copy. Uh, then calling uh, function two, uh, function two is a pass by reference, so we need to uh, call a copy constructor and a destructor, just a uh, return. Just a return. When main function finish, uh, so call a cat structure. Uh, if you want to pass by reference and uh, you wouldn't change the original value, uh, you just uh, pass by reference. And uh, in your function, in your function, you wouldn't change the original values. We can use the const. We use const to describe this uh, uh, parameter. So you cannot change this original value. You cannot change this original value. Otherwise, we'll cause a compare error. Uh, look here. This data is a pass by reference. And we use the const to describe this uh, parameter. In this function, date, date is read only, is read only. You can read, but you cannot change data's value because it is a const. You cannot modify date. So if you want the function change original value, you should use const to describe this parameter. In your function, if you try to modify the, the, this uh, data value, it will cause a compare error. Okay, this is a uh, uh, example. Uh, this is a uh, example uh, for pass a point by reference. Pass a point by reference. That means uh, the parameter is a point and uh, pass by reference. This is a uh, homework. Uh, this is your homework. Uh, you should. Uh, read this source code uh, you should read this source code and uh, output and output this code as result uh, this is a homework for you a homework for you uh, and uh, you're just uh, handing the result of this code Uh, return by reference, a uh, return by reference. Here, look, 
here is a return by reference. Uh, that means you, you should uh, return when you in your function, in your function, you had a create, create a variable, then you should return this variable's reference, this variable's reference. This is a return by reference. Uh, look, in this function, in this function, a person is an object. And uh, we send its name is uh, John Doe. The age is uh, 30. The age is uh, 30. Look, that name right here. Uh, that age right here. Then repile this letter. Repile this letter. This function. This function is uh, return by reference. That means. Uh, it will return these values reference. Uh, Repair this letter one is A. Uh, and uh, letter two is uh, N. Letter three is uh, E. Then you got name. You get name, person get name. The name should be J A N E. Uh, J A N E. Because this is a reference. This is a reference. You had to change. You had to change the uh, original uh, original value. Okay, dynamic. Memory management. Uh, in this section, uh, we will study free store, memory uh, allocation, memory deallocation, copy constructors, and uh, some uh, common pitfalls, uh, memory leak over white. Uh, using the allocate memory, the deallocating memory tells. The free store variables created in the free store have a dynamic extent. The extent of a variable describes how long a variable stays around in a program. So you can define a dynamic extent for a variable. For a variable. Not like if in your main function int i, the i left time is the whole your function. If we in your main function, int i, uh, so this variable should be released after your main function finished, after your main function finished. But sometimes we can use free store, free store, uh, I mean, the uh, variables from the free store. We can defend its uh, Dynamic extent. That means before your program are uh, finished, you can release you can release these uh, variables. Not like this way. Uh, in the I in main function, only the main function finished, this memory space should be released. If we get we get the uh, variables uh, from free store, uh, we can finish it before the main function uh, before. And uh, you can defend the left time uh, anytime, anytime. Look, another term commonly used in palace uh, of the uh, left hand is a uh, extent is a uh, left hand. So you defend, you defend the uh, variables uh, left hand. Uh, you can release this space uh, anytime. Uh, the precise of opt-in memory from the free store is called memory allocation. Allocation. We use new. Uh, we use new operator to get the free space to get the space from the free store. Uh, in C++, we use the new to get the uh, 
this from free store. Look here, uh, new ink, uh, new ink. That means we had to get a space for ink. We get a space for ink variables. And uh, new, for new operator, return, return data type is a point, is a point. So PPR, we should that. And then this point <coughs> to PPR. PPR is an ink point. <coughs> this sentence means we get a space. We get a space to store an ink, ink variable. And uh, we assign this uh, space address to a point, uh, to a point. Remember, new return. For new return type is a point, is a point. New int uh, to point. Uh, Rest uh, risk uh, PTR equal to 10. Then stay out. This is a uh, address. PTR is a uh, address. Uh, asterisk uh, PTR is a pin. There's a value stored in this address. So uh, new char should return a point, point to a space used to store a char variable. New string, uh, a space to store a string variable. Let's address. Again to SPR, PPR. Look, we can, then we can get a space to store an array here, float 100. This is a float array, a float array, and we get its address first address of this uh, array, then, then this memory address to PPR1, PPR1, float, float point, a float point. Uh, here, we get a float array, uh, and uh, then uh, address to PPR2. Uh, in this example, user defined a class, uh, my class, my class. This is a user defined class. And uh, in main function, uh, we can new, we can new an uh, object, new my class for. Uh, so this is a uh, look, this is call this a uh, member function, call this a uh, constructor, and new an uh, object, learn object address. Uh, address uh, then to the uh, PTR1. Then th this time PTR1 point to an object, point to an object uh, address. Here, new my class 10, uh, we create a class, my class array. This is an array, uh, the size is a 10, used to store 10 my class object. And, uh, address, then address to PTR2. So here, PTR, remember, since PTR is a point, so it's not a dot, we should use this operator. If this is a point, so should follow this uh, operator. If this is an object, we use a dot uh, to access its uh, member variables and a member function. Since this is a point, this is, a, we should follow this operator. PTR1 value, uh, a PTR1 value, uh, because this is a this function, uh, call this function, it should be four. Uh, it should, here, it should be output four. Uh, PTR2 value, PTR2 value, look, PTR, to point to this my class, my class array, and this my class array calls this 
for this constructor. Uh, this painted elements, they all possess uh, the constructor. So PTR2 value should be there. Uh, PTR2, at this time, PTR2 point to the first one, point to the first one. Uh, there are 10 my class in this uh, array, uh, PTR2 just a point to the first one. Uh, because this is uh, my class point. Uh, so the output of the first one is a uh, value. It's a zero. Since we can we can use new to get the free space, uh, to get the space from free store. And uh, when we want to release this memory, we should use the delay. We should use the delay. Because this is a dynamic exchange, we can define, and uh, we can define our error variables in a dynamic exchange. We use new to create this variable. And now we use delay to release these variables uh, space. Uh, so this is a dynamic exchange. Uh, not like in the I. If in your main function uh, in the I, this space should be released only when your program finished. Uh, this space should be could be released. Uh, so the left time. So for this variable, left time is the whole your program. Is a whole program, but new and delay you can define a variables uh, dynamic. It's true. Look, this new double uh, and uh, address and then to the PTR one. Here, delete PTR one. Then we should uh, release uh, this variable is no longer needed, so we can release this memory to the free store. Uh, uh, we return this memory to the free store, so we call it delete PTR1. We use delete to release memory. <coughs> Look, in this example, PTR1, uh, this is a point, point to an uh, array. This array, the size is uh, 100. This area, uh, this in area, the size is uh, 100. Uh, PTR2 is the point, point to an area. The area size is n, is n, and uh, the n is uh, read from the keyboard, read from the keyboard. We had a print to point, uh, point to this area, and uh, this area. Uh, we, we no longer need it. This two area. When we no longer needed these two area, we should uh, release these two areas uh, space to the free store. To the free store. So if we delete PTR one, delete PTR one, only release the first first data elements. Uh, the Space, you know, this is this area. The length is uh, one hundred. Delete PTR one. PTR one is a uh, point. Just a point to here. Point to here. So delete PTR one. Just uh, release this space, not the whole area. Uh, if you wanna release the whole area's space, it should be like this. The same time is uh, like this. Uh, delete bracket and uh, PTR1. That means uh, PTR1 point to an array. We release the whole array. Uh, PTR2, uh, this is a uh, point, point to an array. Uh, and uh, we release this array, uh, release this array. <coughs> Uh, this is a uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, function. Uh, this is the uh, example. Uh, this is the uh, int, int variable. And uh, we assign uh, this int address to p lock. <coughs> and uh, we new uh, int space, then uh, address to p hip, uh, p hip. And uh, it's a risk p hip is a seven, uh, is a seven. So say out var, var is a five. So we output here. Say out as a risk pl p lock. Uh, since this is a uh, this point point to var, so as a risk p lock should output five. And uh, say out p hip, so here p hip is a seven, so output p hip. Then we no longer need p hip. We release, we release uh, this uh, <coughs> space. Then p hip. We forgot. If we forgot, it's a good experience when we delete. When we delete a point, we should make this point point to zero. Uh, it's a good experience. If we delete a um, point, we sh should make this uh, point equal to zero. Otherwise, if we forgot we had uh, delete this p hit, we then we, we then it again and uh, p hit then uh, not to p hit stay out. It should be nine. It should be nine. And uh, delete and uh, delete p hip. Remember, a good experience when we delete, when we delete, it should uh, the minimum equal to zero, equal to zero. Otherwise, maybe cause a long time error. Look, this example. Uh, this is an uh, int. Uh, we get a new space from the free store and uh, p int equal to 10. Then stay out p int and uh, delete p int. Notice, notice that we had a, a good experience. We should, uh, after delete p int, we should make the p int equal to 10. Uh, here we we not made a p int equal to 10. Then p long, new long, p long equal to zero. Right here. And uh, here, p int equal to 20. Look, we had a delete, we had a delete this uh, point before, but we forgot it. We forgot it. We, we then, we, then the value to p asterisk p int again. Uh, here we had uh, we had uh, release this memory, but we forgot it. We use this uh, point again. We, we use this p point again. Then uh, we assign the value. We assign the value to this address. Uh, look, it's a twenty. And uh, stay out p log. Uh, p log. Maybe. It will, it should be 20. It should be 20. Why? Why p log is uh, 20? Because when we release this uh, memory and the p log, new log, maybe you just get this space. Uh, you had released p int to the free store and uh, your new log, you get this. Uh, you had uh, released this space to the free store. And uh, when you new log, maybe this space, maybe it's, uh, this space give to the P log, give to the P log. So when change the value here, you change the P log's value. You change the P log's value. So it will call a runtime error. It will cause a runtime error. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Uh, 
Okay, I will explain it again. Look, here, news, this is a free store, this is a free store, and the new ink, we get a space, we get a space for the ink. Look, we get a space from the free store. And this space for P ink. When we delete, when we delete P ink, so this space return back to the free store, to the free store. Then new law, new law, uh, P law. That space, maybe this space, give it, give this free store, give this space. To the P law, to the P law. Uh, if you delete P int and made the P int equal to zero, this P int would not point to this space anymore. You know, if you delete the P int and made the P int equal to zero, this point would not point to this space anymore. But you forgot, you forgot made the P int equal to zero, although you had a delete P int. But this point is uh, still available, and uh, this point still point to this space. So right here, you use this uh, point again, and uh, then twenty to this uh, to this uh, address. Uh, you store a twenty in this address, uh, but this space had been given to the P long, so you change. You change the p-long's value. You change the p-long's value. It will cause a runtime error. A runtime error. So that's why. That's why when we delete and point, when we delete and point, it's a it's a good experience. We should make this point equal to zero. Equal to zero. Then this p int. Is a invalid. Is a invalid. It should not. It will not point to this space anymore. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you forgot this, you use it again. It will still point to this space. Uh, point to this space. So it may be cause a runtime error. Uh, if free, given another space, given another space to P long, uh, maybe your result is uh, correct. If the free space given this memory to P long, so it will cause a long time error. So it's a danger. It's a danger for your program. Not every time P long would be changed. Uh, just uh, this space, uh, give this space to the P long, it will cause a long time error. Uh, okay. Uh, today class is over. Uh, see you later.